There's been a tragic discovery in Sydney's north with a family of four, including two children, found dead inside their home at Davidson. It was the act of Fernando and Fernando only. There had been domestic trouble at the house before. That was an extreme example of domestic violence. Fernando Manrique today unmasked as a cold, calculating monster. So in October 2016, there was a tragic discovery. The, the family of Fernando Manrique and Maria Lutz and their children, Eliza and Martin, were discovered uh, gassed to death in their home. Tell me how that story unfolded for you. I remember getting a call from the desk uh, saying, you know, something's going on in Davidson, in Sydney's north. It sounds like uh, it might be a murder-suicide or um, there's multiple people that have died, can you go out to it? So I drove out there and I remember it was raining um, and they'd blocked off uh, most of the street. It was quite a steep street up to the house um, and there were police everywhere, but it was really difficult to sort of figure out what was going on. There were conflicting reports about you know, how many people have died, how many people have died. Uh, and then the police um, did a press conference and revealed that it was a family. Um, Fernando Manrique, Maria Lutz um, and their two children um, who have died of the family dog as well. About 11.20am this morning, uh, police were called following uh, a concern for welfare uh, to a house just a short uh, distance up the road. Uh, police eventually forced entry to that premises and inside they found a 43-year-old female, a 44-year-old male a 10-year-old boy and an 11-year-old girl deceased, as well as a, a large dog. There was all kinds of sort of unhelpful speculation about um, the motives behind their death, um, who was involved, who wasn't involved. It was the act of Fernando and Fernando only. The Sydney father who killed himself, his wife and two children with deadly gas was having an affair in the weeks before the tragedy. Despite crippling tax office and credit card debts, the 44-year-old was sending thousands to his 17-year-old lover in the Philippines. Police say in September 2016, he formed a clear intention to kill, opening a business account with BOC, buying two cylinders of deadly carbon monoxide gas. Over a, a few months, I got to know Maria's um, beautiful friends and they very bravely spoke up about what Maria was going through at that time, what their relationship was like, that she had planned to leave Fernando and uh, set up a life with her and her children. And they were the circumstances that led up to, obviously, him setting up this elaborate gas system inside the house that essentially killed them all while they were sleeping. I can confirm that both um, children suffer a significant disability. It's just a tragic thing. So when you arrived at that scene, you said it was all, you said the police held a press conference, but, you know, just to explain to people watching who may not be in this field, the police don't don't give you information, do they? Talk me through a bit about the etiquette, I suppose. Well, it depends what kind of uh, crime it is. Um, you know, if we're talking about crime scenes in general, after homicide, you know, including gangland murders and things like that, you do you do try and sort of strike up a conversation with any detective that walks past you in the hope that they just um, let slip some nugget of information. But they run a pretty tight ship in New South Wales Police, so they're not always willing to share the state secrets. Um, but usually we'll turn up and especially in the initial um, period after a crime's happened and the crime scene tapers up, sort of lingering around the crime scene, knocking on all um, the neighbours' doors, um, asking if they heard anything, uh, looking for CCTV, anyone that had um, footage or photos on their phone immediately after the crime happened. And sometimes friends and family can turn up, especially when they don't know what's happened either and they've seen their friends' or family's house uh, on the news. Investigators are still unsure if Fernando intended to take his own life as well or whether he was accidentally caught in the same lethal trap he set to wipe out his entire family. That was, you know, an extreme example of domestic violence. We get, unfortunately, so many domestic violence murders in New South Wales every single year. And I think by having her friends speak up and be able to provide like a very deep and clear and concise insight into what was going on in their lives beforehand 
really help people understand that this was domestic violence. There was no pact. There was no agreement. You know, she never would have done anything at all to her, her children at all. Yeah, I think in those situations, especially when you're sitting down with those people, you know, I imagine you would you would have been probably in their houses having cups of tea with with people who were probably very, very emotional at the really tragic loss of their their friends. And then later it came out at the inquest, I'm not sure if you followed that, that he had a a teenage lover on the side. He was he had been making weird payments to 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 this lover right before the um the act but i agree with you like you say the the strength of those people to speak up in the aftermath of something like that which must be incredibly hard but has has really given this woman and those those children a voice to to and some truth and clarity around what actually happened yeah exactly and it's not always the case um in every single homicide that we cover um that family or friends uh, want to speak or are willing to speak, uh, you know, it's different in every single situation. But, you know, certainly in this case, they really wanted to um, make sure everyone knew what Maria and her children were really like. They wanted to, you know, preserve their um, dear friend's memory. As a journalist, you know, you see, you feel a massive responsibility to do that story justice, but also a privilege in being able to tell that story and share that story as well.